evening, everybody. It is 5.30 on this Monday evening, and it's dark outside. God, I hate when they take that extra hour of sunlight away. Okay, today's markets were lower, softer, um, although the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ were all slightly higher. The Dow was up about 125 and finished up 34.54, or just one-tenth of one percent. Uh, NASDAQ was up about the same, finished up 40, 50, three tenths of a percent, and the S&P was up 764 after being up about 18. Um, the Russell was the big loser down 22.77 or 1.29 percent, and the transports were down just under ten dollars or seven tenths of a percent. The reason I say that the markets were lower was because we were two and a half to one to the downside in stocks on the NYSE, two to one on the NASDAQ. And volume was the same, well over two to one down both places. And that volume was remarkably light, which is not a bad thing after a big up day like this. But we fell back from that 4.9 average daily volume to 4.3 today. So a little on the soft side as far as the futures go. Um, the crude looks especially weak here, even though it's back at support. It looks to me as if the MACD is about to roll to the downside here. Um, and I pointed out in last night's charts with uh, comments in the letter that we had this gradual rolling over of the RSI. Um, you know, we're getting almost back to support, and we are clearly at support here. Let's go to the daily so I can really show you what happened today. Um, we were actually up to 82 and a quarter, 82.24, closed on the low, although still up on the day. You can see on the relative strength on the weekly, we're already back at support, although the MACD looks just like it did um, on the weekly, although it's at a much lower le level. Let me show you that again, just to make sure. We're way up here at uh, plus 568 and rolling to the downside. Um, with no support until practically the zero line on the daily, we are already on the negative 1.11. Okay, this is the this is negative two. So we're already rolling to the downside there. It may take a little bit of sideways action here. If it holds in here, clearly we're going back to 85 or 90. Gold was down $10, um, wasn't much higher or much lower, uh, was $12 higher, was $5, $4.5 lower, down $10, silver down a nickel, and um, the copper held its entire gain all day. The bonds were down about a point and a quarter, the, um, pardon me, the bonds were down a point and a quarter. The dollar was actually up 19 cents. Bitcoin up 515, although it was also about uh, 500 higher. It was up 1,000. Um, and uh, Ethereum 1909 up 76. It had been as high as 1938, which was up about 100. So we are seeing a little bit of weakness. Um, I guess people are more interested again in stocks, um, although I'm not so sure that that's the best way to be right here. Okay, um, this morning I mentioned Celdex. It was $34, up almost $8, gave back most of that. Um, 
only had a high of 33.55 regular hours and closed towards the low at 29.47, still up three and a half bucks though. Um, and remember that was a phase two trial. Um, MLTX, which is the one that was down, was 36, down 15, managed to gain back 20 cents of that. 35, uh, 36 down 1508. Uh, after the close, International Flavors and Fragrances, one of my favorite old time names, one of the um, Nifty 50 from back in the 60s and 70s, um, had earnings after the close. It had closed 72.34, down uh, 37 cents, traded as high as 77. The last is 76. That's up. $3.29, and two downgrades, one of which we happen to own, which is Paramount Global. It was double downgraded uh, from outperform to underperform by Bank of America, closed twelve sixty nine down a dollar seven or 7.8%, and Arbomarle, ALB, which has been an incredible winner, although it too has come down awfully hard. Um, I mean, this stock was one of uh, Josh Brown's favorite, and it moved from, you know, the 50 to $60 range all the way up to trade at 334 uh, Today, it was downgraded at um, UBS, Closed one nineteen forty six down eight dollars and fifty two cents, and uh, one more kind of an outstanding mover. Although I'm guessing kind of a crappy company, just looking at what it's done. Uh, MPS, which does business under the name of Life Wallet. Uh, symbol L I F W. I'm not really sure what this company does. It's called MPS Recovery, and it engages, according to Finviz, engages in the development of healthcare recovery and data analytics software. It also focuses on the identification and recoveries of improper payments by Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial insurance using data and analytics. Um, it's headquartered in Florida, Carl Gables. Um, so the identification and recovery of improper payments by Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial insurance, that I can understand as, um, you know, looking for overpayments and fraud. However, um, the stock today, it, well, Friday it closed two dollars and seventy four cents, and that includes a reverse split, one for twenty five. So that gives you an idea where it really is. It's the equivalent of a dime, two seventy four divided by twenty five. Um, today, though, without any real news except that it got a new CFO and news seven days ago that it was back in compliance with NASDAQ, the stock traded as high as 1748 and closed at $8.12, up $5.32 for a move of 198%. So don't really know what to tell you about that one, but you know, when I see something, when I see it on the tape or I see the chart, you get the general idea. I always like to let you know what's going on there. The only news that it had today was the number of times that it got stopped for, you know, the volatility circuit breakers, nothing else from the company. Maybe they'll come up with something overnight. Okay. Uh, tomorrow we have, uh, at 8.30, September trade balance, always a big negative. Uh, 
Consensus is for minus 60.1 billion. Last month was a slight improvement. So that was minus 58.3. So they're looking for a little bigger number. And then at three o'clock, consumer credits for September. Um, consensus is expected to be 9 billion. The prior was negative 15.6 billion. So we'll get an idea of what that looks like. Um, we also have a bunch of uh, earnings reports tomorrow before the open. We have DH Horton, which is DHI. We have Uber, Fidelity National Info Systems, which is FIS, Global Fraft. Foundries, KK and R, KK Kravitz, Coleman and Roberts, Melco Resorts, MLCO Squarespace, among those for tomorrow before the open. All right, folks, kind of a quiet day, not bad after the week that we had. Not happy about that two to one, two and a half to one declines and uh, volume, but maybe tomorrow will be a better day. Have a good one.